Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Jen's Books. I hope you're doing well and I hope you're enjoying the sunshine that we have here. This video is going to be recommendation six books from my shelves, but all of these books have something in common. So in this video, all of these books are memoirs or autobiographies. And they are memoirs and autobiographies that cover some really difficult and challenging subject matter. However, they're also about resilience and overcoming diversity and difficulty. Um, so they're kind of really full of hope as well. But I will say these, these books aren't going to be for everybody. So if you find um, some of the subject matter that we're discussing um, you know, might be upsetting and triggering to you, obviously these books aren't going to be for you. But hopefully there'll be something here that you'll be tempted to pick up and it'll be really interesting to know in the comments whether you've read any of these memoirs before if you have what your thoughts are about them or if you have any recommendations of memoirs that you think that i'd enjoy um, based on these listings so this is six from my shelf so first of all i wanted to talk about educated by tara westover so tara talks about her childhood um, living in poverty um, in Idaho in a sort of Mormon uh, survivalist family. She's the youngest of seven siblings and her parents um, bring them up very isolated from society at large. So the father has a lot of paranoia about the government and about, uh, you know, the, the, the effect that engaging with with society will have on the children so they're not allowed to go to school they're not allowed to have medical intervention um, and as such they end up working quite dangerous jobs the father earns money by collecting scrap metal so the children from an early age are working with him uh, collecting scrap metal and, and that can be quite obviously quite a dangerous uh, you know role to have and the mother she's an unregistered midwife um, sort of holistic healer in the community and she gains quite a lot of uh, you know business and, and money through that particular activity particularly as the story goes on but Tara really is desperate she wants to go to school she really wants to get an education so you can imagine there's a lot of conflict there and it's when one of her older brothers actually goes off to college that she finds the strength to break away and, uh, you know, start her own education and ends up studying at Cambridge. So she clearly, you know, does quite well by it. So what I like about this book is it's incredibly accessible. I, I whizzed through it, I, you know, gobbled it down. Um, it's really interesting. It's really engaging. Um, there's there's a real insight into the dynamics of the family and it's quite shocking at times, um, but it's also about overcoming the, the poverty and the, the lack of education that Tara experienced as, as a child. There is some controversy about the book. The family kind of rejected the, the, the storytelling um, that Tara uh, communicated in the book. Uh, but it, she does change the names of, of the characters, the life characters. They're not named after her, uh, her actual names of her family. But I would recommend it. This was a book that actually was recommended to me by one of my students quite a few years ago now. And I really, really enjoyed it. So if you've not read memoirs before and you want something that's really accessible, really moving and really engaging and quite thrilling as well at times, um, educated is, is, is certainly a good starting point. The next book that I wanted to talk to you, I'm actually also going to be mentioning in my first April Reads video, which is Heartberries by Therese Marie Mailhot. Um, this isn't going to be a book for everybody. It's incredibly raw, um, but it's also raw in the way it's told as well. So it's quite fragmented and quite scrappy um, in the telling. But Marie was brought up on a reservation. She's, she's a Native American. And she married from at an early age to kind of escape her family and ended up then leaving the reservation and losing, uh, you know, uh, uh, the ability to look after her first son. Her first son was taken away from her and went back to her first husband just as she was about to give birth to a second son who does stay with her. And once she's left the reservation, Cherie signs up with for creative writing classes where she meets her second husband. And this is kind of a love letter to him. But part of it's actually written in a mental institution as well. So it's incredibly raw. It talks about um, the abuse that she suffered as a child. It talks about, uh, you know, losing her uh, custody of her first child and the, the grief that that 
brought to her, particularly as she's, you know, just given birth to her second child. But it's very much about the passion she feels for her second husband and how destructive that is actually at times. It's only a very short book, but it is really insightful. But as I say, sort of my word of caution with this, as well as the subject matter being quite traumatic, it's quite fragmented and, and I found it quite challenging to read. Not necessarily in a bad way, but in a way that's not going to appeal to, to everybody. But when this book came out in 2018, which was actually the same year as uh, Educated came out, it received a lot of acclaim and I think I heard about it on another booktube channel. So it, it's one that um, is certainly worth giving a go. It's, it's not a very long book, but it is quite raw and fragmented, both in the, in the subject matter and, and the passion and the, the talking about mental health and talking about motherhood, but also in the way that it's told in quite a fragmented um, uh, way, uh, which isn't going to be for everybody, but quite rewarding if, if it's one that, you know, strikes you as of being of interest. The second, oh, sorry, the third book I've picked up off my shelf is You Will Not Have My Hate, which is an international bestseller and it's written by Antoine Lyris. Um, this is the story of how he became a, a widow and a single father after the Batalan shootings in, in Paris in 2015. He wrote this book almost immediately after the events. Again, it's really raw and it's an exploration of, of grief and love and um you know there's a sort of very hopeful ending there's a real glimmer of light at the end of it but it's his determination to process that loss um you know that that occurred due to the the, the conflict and rising tensions between uh you know um uh, you know the different nations at that point but not to come out of it feeling hatred for the perpetrators um, and it's, as I say, it begins with the events. It's it's very accessible, but it is it is challenging to read because of his just the, the grief and the loss of his of his wife um, in such a, a violent and unexpected way. Um, but it is really interesting in terms of, uh, as I say, a study of grief. It's a really quick read. It's it's in the form of like a diary. It goes through um, dates, but it is it is written sort of very soon after the events took place so again that might be one that interests you it might be one you want to avoid completely but I think it was one that was recommended by Jen Campbell on her channel and I find that her recommendations are fantastic so if you're interested in memoir if you're interested in resilience and reading about individuals who've overcome a huge amount then this is a, a, another book that you're going to get a lot out of I don't like to say enjoy but you'll you'll get a lot out of and similarly, this book is called Wave by Sonali Durrani Gala. Excuse my appalling uh, uh, pronunciation as per usual. Those who've watched the videos on this channel for a while will know my pronunciation isn't always fantastic. Um, but this is Wave and this is an, a, a really stunning uh, exploration. So, Sonali, it's it's almost beyond belief what she uh, went through. It's about the 2004 tsunami that um, that hit sort of Thailand and, and Sri Lanka. And in the space of moments, Sonali loses her husband. She loses her two young sons who are aged eight and, and five. And she loses her parents as they're all washed away. Um, and she starts the the book or starts the memoir by talking about the actual event itself and, and the the horrific nature of the tsunami and the uh, violence that it wrought. They were actually on holiday in Sri Lanka at the time. Uh, they lived in London. They'd gone over to see Sonali's parents. Um, and she, she sort of saves herself by clinging to a tree as, as the jeep that's carrying her family is sort of swept away. And for a long time, she can't believe, you know, that they're gone. But then it's proved that, that they are. And she has a kind of a real understandable breakdown. And at one point, she's sort of drinking a lot she's having suicidal thoughts her family are, are, are keeping watch of her keeping close support of her um i mean you know she's lost everything she doesn't return to london for two years after the event when she can really start to process the you know the loss of her of her children and her husband um but there is hope in here as well it's 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 a really challenging read but um you know it's about 
sort of anniversaries as well and you know the, the boys birthdays and as time goes by and the sort of echoes of their lives as they play out in her existence so again a really powerful read one that I really enjoyed it was one that was recommended by one of my supervisors and my PhD as, as being sort of linked to the kinds of themes that I'm looking at in my poetry um, but again challenging could be triggering for a lot of people but incredibly resilient woman who overcame all of these things to, to to share her experiences in a really raw and accessible way so that's wave the next book is is more of a, a, a autobiography really than a memoir and it's i am malala um this is a book that i wrote for a poetry project that i was working on and it was really interesting insight into Malala's life um, and it was published in 2013 and you probably know Malala she she also won the Nobel Peace Prize but she was living in Pakistan with her family her father who run a school that that Malala went to when uh, the Islamic State took uh, control of their region and at one point they all have to evacuate but the family decide to go back and continue to live um, in the region and the father is very supportive of Malala getting an education so she attends the school and she stands up for the rights of, of other young women in the region to have an education um, but then in 2012 after fighting for her right for this education um, in, in the Taliban run Swat Valley where she's living she's um, shot a uh, close range in the head by a gunman who, who targeted her for exactly those reasons and um, as a result of this Malala and her family are flown to Birmingham in the UK where she uh, you know she receives treatment for um, for this for this horrific shooting but she recovers and she continues um, to be a spokesperson for the rights of, of women to have education uh, in, in her country um, it's a really engaging uh, autobiography. The story won't be completely new to you. Malala's um, a well-known figure. Um, it's written by her and it says um, Christina Lamb. So she's she's had some help with it. Um, but there's photos in there as well. But you really get an insight into what her life was like in the Swat Valley and then what it was like coming to the UK and to cold Birmingham um, after that. And, and her, uh, how these experiences really ignited or continue to ignite this passion to stand up for people's rights and be a social advocate so i definitely recommend it um it's it's a really interesting read and again another read about resilience and overcoming um experiences to kind of end up stronger really at the end of it and more resolute in your beliefs so um that's a really good read as well a Cage Bird Sings by Mayor Angelou is the first of six volumes of Mayor Angelou's autobiography uh, and memoir and this is my absolute favourite one. I've, I've read most of the, the, the books in the series but this is the one that's about her childhood growing up in 1930s in America in the South. So when she's only three or four her and her brother Bailey are sent with a tag on them on the train to go and live with Mayor's grandmother um, and Mayor's grandmother uh, owns and runs a store in um this this in in in, the, in America in the South and it's all about overcoming uh you know prejudice it's all about discrimination it's about poverty and abuse but it's also so beautifully written there's so much joy in this book as well there is joy and unexpected humor throughout and it's incredibly accessible if if you've not read memoir before or you've only read sort of biography um this is just so accessible it's she's a real storyteller and you can tell that Mayor Angie was a poet because every line is just beautiful it's exquisite so um this is a book that I was for, <laughs> say forced to read but it was a book that I had to read for my A levels back in the day and at the time we all sort of grumbled a bit but I reread it I've reread it several times now and it's just stunning it's such an amazing memoir um, and you can really understand her, her poem, one of her poems that she's really famous for, and Still I Rise. It's all about resilience and overcoming, um, you know, her, her, her very sort of challenging but also beautiful childhood as well in many ways. There are some really horrific things that happen to her in the book. She's At one point she goes to live with her mother um, and her mother's boyfriend rapes her and, and it's, it's, it's horrific. There are things in here that are very difficult to read. 
but there is also humour and love and joy and connection um, between her and her brother, between her and her son. And um, yeah, it, I, I recommend this. If you've not read it before, definitely, definitely read it. And I will probably plug away it again because it's just my absolute favourite memoir. And, um, you know, I, I think in terms of accessibility and enjoyability and just plain joy, uh, these are these are certainly books that that I recommend, despite some sort of challenging, um, you know, events that take place to, to quite a young child. But yeah, those are my six books in the shelf, my six recommendations. I hope that you find something there that you enjoy. Uh, as I say, there are trigger warnings for all of those. So if you're not sure whether they're going to be appropriate to you, it's worth having a little bit of a read about them before you before you buy or, or take them out of the library. Um, but if you have read them before, I'd love to know what your thoughts are or whether you have any other recommendations based on those sorts of um, memoirs that you think I might enjoy. And I'll see you in the comments. Do remember to like and subscribe if you're new to the challenge, uh, new to the challenge, new to the channel. But thank you very much for joining me. Take care. Bye.